you would agree with me that mental health is, is a topic that is so underrated, especially in this country. And it's so important because we live in a society where we face different kinds of pressure from work, from school, you're driving in traffic, you're probably fasting and playing top LRB, and then some delivery guy is about to hit your side mirror, another guy behind you just hits your bumper, and you have to make a critical decision. Should I stop? playing Tok Dalabi and curse the person, or should I just curse the person and get back to Tok Dalabi? Uh, my point is we need to really take care of our mental health, and to discuss this mental health issue is a policy analyst and the founder of Nigerian Mental Health, Chime Asonye. Yeah. Welcome. Good. Good to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you so much for coming. So first of all, what is mental health? Um, that's a great question. Um, first of all, when people think of mental health, they think only a couple of people has it. But like Yinka Davis was saying, music is universal, mental health is universal. So it employs social, psychological, and cognitive well-being, essentially. Um, so it's not just about physical health. We need to be thinking about people's psychological well-being, their mental state, and how they're doing upstairs, essentially. OK, OK. That's very, very insightful. Yeah. Um, why do you think we don't pay so much attention to mental health, especially in this part of the world? Uh, there's a lot of reasons we don't pay attention to mental health. First, it's just like a lot of vulnerable and minority groups. You know, we think about women, we think about youth. We don't really pay attention to those who have um, mental health challenges. One is stigmatized. So when most people think about mental health in Nigeria, they think of somebody going mad in the streets or somebody hurting themselves or somebody talking to themselves. And I'm not just saying that. That's actually what the polling says. Africa Polling Institute and Epi Africa said it. And it's also a minority. One eighth of Nigerians have some sort of mental health condition over the course of their lifetime. Only 10% get access to care. So because it's a minority and because it's stigmatized, it's not something we think about when it comes to health. And it's not just people who focus on health in general or on disabilities. Really, it's marginalized in general in a lot of areas. So one of the things that Nigerian Mental Health wants to do we're the largest multidisciplinary network of stakeholders, organizations, and thought leaders focused on mental health. And we want to make sure it's an important part of the conversation, uh, whether it's in elections and how people are coping right now, post everything that's going on, but generally making sure that folks are, are really fit. Um, there was another study from MANI, which is Mentally Aware Nigeria Initiative, and Epi Africa also, and it said that 75% of Nigerians approximately have acute levels of anxiety. And it, there's, we, I mean, it's obvious why, right? I think it should be higher than 75%. 5%, well, um, maybe, maybe, maybe Because it, is. it should be yeah. more than 75%. Because, but, it, I mean, the point is that a majority of issues, individuals who are from the country are having challenges, whether it's the recession or poverty or um, hopelessness. And so we need to make sure that people aren't just good physically, but they're also good mentally as well. Okay, so... Um, We've seen cases where uh, a lot of people are being pushed to sort of move towards suicide as a result of the pressure. They don't have someone to talk to. Yeah. Um, so how do you think we can sort of uh, stop the stigmatization and uh, let people know that it's okay to actually just sort of speak to someone? It's okay to do therapy. Yeah. It's okay to say you're not okay. And we need to normalize these conversations. I, I'm really proud of people like MI who have been helping have conversations. They, he had a campaign called with another organization called Guy, Are You All Right? So if you had a challenge, Guy, are you all right? It's all right to say these things. But one of the reasons it's so stigmatized is laws are expression of our context. And in Nigeria, um, attempted suicide is criminalized according to the criminal code and the penal code. Right now, you're subject up to a year of punishment in jail, which is not right, especially when we just passed the Mental Health Act earlier this year. If we want people to say, I have a challenge, I have an issue, like the Mental Health Act Express, we need to make sure that um, there's help-seeking behavior is encouraged. The World Health Organization says that those who, have, who are psychologically vulnerable don't want to talk they want to ask for help from their friends or their family because the law is criminalized. So um, Nigeria Mental Health and our network partners, over 40 organizations have come together and we launched something called Suicide Not a Crime NG. 
and we're calling for a government, we're calling for actors to really decriminalize attempted suicide so we can make sure that those who are pushed to the brink um, don't do it. And we're proud, and one of the reasons I'm in Lagos today is that the Federal Ministry of Health is hap working on a national suicide prevention strategy. We're making sure that decriminalization of attempted suicide is part of that conversation, and hopefully we can double down on some of the gains we had with the Mental Health Act. That's amazing. Um, 7th of April, we'll have the World Health Day. Yeah. Um, how do you think we should leverage is the campaign? Because I think it's health for all. That's the yeah. theme. Yeah. How can we leverage this campaign to sort of show and shed more light on mental health? So I think that we need to push on some of the, we need to consolidate on the gains we have right now. Um, we, the Mental Health Act that passed in January is historic. It was something that was languishing the federal government for over two decades. So we have a new enabling environment that's human rights focused and also brings us back into the modern area. And now we need to make sure mental health is a national priority. So um, Nigeria Mental Health and our partners, we're actually having a press conference next week um, on the shadow of uh, World Health Day, which is the theme is health for all, but yeah. we don't think of mental health as part of that. And it's just true. When you look at our national mental health budget, our national health budget, only 5% in this current budget goes to mental health. And um, most of that is the hospitals versus support groups or lay counseling and things like that. So what we wanna do is come together on Thursday on the heels of World Health Day and say, what are the next steps with the Mental Health Act? We should do things like increase budgeting for mental health. We should do things like decriminalize attempted suicide. We need to make sure we do things like bring all stakeholders into conversation. It can't just be psychiatrists or psychologists, but lay counselors, artists even, um, those who are psychiatrists, um, social workers, nurses, et cetera, need to be part of the conversation in general. We need to make sure that this conversation doesn't just leave us because a lot of times people who have lived conditions of mental health, they're not part of the conversation. So we need to make sure we bring them back into the fold. And then we want to think about mental health. How do we measure our success? We have an act. Is it decreasing attempted suicides? Is it increased funding? We need to make sure we have clear metrics. So our press conference on Thursday is going to help call for some of these changes, and we hope individuals can sign on. If they're interested in learning more, they can visit us at our website, www.nigeriamentalhealth.org, um, to get involved, understand what we're doing on Thursday, and hear how we want to make mental health a national priority in Nigeria. That's amazing. Um, so, uh, my, my opening own monologue, I said there are lots of factors, you know, that sort of put pressure on us as Nigerians. In fact, in Lagos, particularly yeah. traffic. Ah, but the time traffic, is... well, I can't even get to your <laughs> studio on time. So, you see what happened to Yinka. <laughs> uh, yeah. So by the time you stay in traffic, uh, four hours, five hours, six hours mm -hmm. in a day, you come home, you're exhausted, you're agitated, you, your, your nerves are all over. Um, what coping mechanisms do you think the average Nigerian can adopt to sort of protect their mental health? Like some sort of DIY yes. for those that cannot readily access a professional. So this is actually one of the biggest challenge, what you just said right there. You talk about a professional, and that's why it's a problem that uh, over almost 100% of our funding goes to hospitals and to drugs, because some people can't afford drugs. Some people can't afford a professional. So what do you do? I personally um, turn to things that are like wellness strategies. So people don't think that music that we we're just talking about is a form of therapy. During my darkest days, I went to music and sounds and Afropop from rap and hip hop to help me. You can also also do things like meditation and affirmations. We have wellness programming with us. You can have peer support groups. That's important. And we can't take away, especially in our country, faith. People don't think that things like prayer therapy are also a form of wellness, right? So we need to make sure that we look into the body for strategies, whether it's writing and journaling, whether it's planting, whether it's just taking a break and going for a walk um, to reconnect with ourselves. And if we engage in some of these wellness strategies, I think we'll really be uh, better served. Mental health is not just something about drugs and psychiatrists, it's right. also something about how we can look within ourselves to support our coping. Thank you so very much, Chime. And th those coping strategies, I'll adopt them. Personally, I eat a lot of food when I'm stressed. Okay. That helps if, if my mental health. You, if it works for you, <laughs> you didn't invite me, though. <laughs> Thank you so much.